very lucky to grow up here. Very unfortunate with regards to life opportunities in the communities I'm from. So many boarded up houses these days and so much poverty. But at least I always had this place predominantly to myself. It seems some things don't change because instead of being down here, I know I can walk this beach for hours and I might not see another human being. I might see the odd person walking a dog. I know if I went up there and looked in everyone's window, I'll see countless people staring at the TV. They're not in their natural rhythms and cycles. They don't go to bed with the memory of that golden light shining in this cave and the sound of those waves and all the nature I've seen. They go to bed with the same memory as their neighbour. That's a tragedy. Hey guys, so I'm back at where I grew up. This is the beach right near my parents' home. It's nice to be back, it's very beautiful, as you can see. And I have had a chance to do a lot more running and I want to do a video about, a little bit about the importance of knowing the evolution or creation or design of our body and how it's become big business to take us out of that natural rhythm and cycle and natural way of being for our vehicle, for our body. So, I'm not just here to promote the fact that I'm a runner and it's my hobby, most of you know that. But it's not a hobby, it's a, it's a must, it's a way of life for me. But the thing is, if you look at things from a stance, now I don't care if you believe evolution or you believe creationism, I say evolution does not in any way, which shape or form, disprove God, by the way. And I go towards evolution and I find it really very beautiful to look at it that way. While I was in Amsterdam in the airport with Fritzi, I put an old song on that I used to know called on the edge of a cliff by the street and there's a line in there that says uh, for billions of years since the outset of time every single person on your mum and dad's side successfully looked after and passed on to you life what are the chances of that for billions of years since the outset of time every single one of your ancestors survived every single person on your mum and dad's side successfully looked after and passed on to you life what are the chances of that like? It comes to me once in a while And everywhere I tell folk it gets the best smile And as I look at people with that idea in my head I find them to be so wondrous and magical and profound that they made it this far. Now even if you are a creationist then you can still say the same thing, it's just you're saying thousands of years. And I'm not here to discuss that. But for I, I see it as we evolved. So I'll use the term evolved, but you could say created or designed if you prefer. As I look at my human body, its de design, the way it has evolved, or the way it was created, is very important for the way that I live my life. You see, we belong to one massive ecosystem here. And this wonderful, beautiful ecosystem we belong to on planet Earth. There's a lot to learn from looking at that ecosystem around us. And what we can do is we can look at the other animals living in this ecosystem who live in their natural rhythm and cycles, that they are born and created and designed and evolved, if you will, to live by. And it's self-evident. You don't see fat birds flying around in the sky. You don't see fat fish swimming around in the water. 
You don't see fat lions on the plains of Tanzania. You see things that are equipped to live the way they are supposed to live. But when you get to the human species, you see all these health problems, you see people overweight. Now, when I was a child, I was taught about anatomy in school. And I was taught about science of the body and digestion, but no one ever told me where I fit in in the natural world. I was told that this world we created was our natural world, but in actual fact, nothing could be any less natural for us. Waking up and sitting at a desk all day, as many do, is very unnatural for us. It's not normal. And the very design of my body shows it. Because out of every mammal on the planet, the human being is the best designed long distance running machine. Who knows that? Who's taught that as a child? Hey, you're a long distance running mammal. They, they don't teach it. But it's what we are. Everything about your body is designed for that. Even up here, the muscles in your shoulders and the tendons are designed in a way to keep you upright whilst running. There are muscles and tendons in your body that provide you with free energy and only by using like a spring motion and only function when you run. Your feet are designed to be running. You are a running machine. Whether you're unhealthy now and you haven't run, your body's out of shape, still you were born to grow. As your body grows without your say so, without your asking it to do so, thus your body has a natural rhythm and cycle. And as your body grew, it grew to be a runner, whether you took advantage of that or not. Now, most of us did not because the system we live in doesn't teach us. It doesn't teach us our natural rhythms and cycles because most of the ones teaching are not in the natural rhythms and cycles. They're in here. Now, when you look around you and you look to, for example, a dog, a domestic dog and the energy a domestic dog has, they're so present minded, they're so alert, so happy. But if you go to nature and you see uh, antelope, a very common animal for eye in Tanzania. You see it present minded eating grass, but it's alert watching for predators. If it becomes a glutton, it's punished by being the one who doesn't lift up to look for the predator coming and getting eaten. eaten. That's nature's way. Doesn't mean it's very fair, but it's what happens. But as humans, if we do that, what is nature's way? Well, nature's way is we become unhappy. If we gluttonize, we can become unhappy because we don't sit inside our perfect attunement. The best songs are played on the best tuned guitars. The best lives are lived from the best tuned human vehicles. Now, if you've got infinite wealth and material power on the planet, you don't need to be that healthy because you can use the materiality to stimulate yourself. But for most people, that's not how it is. And thus it becomes imprisonment. If you can't sit still in a place like this and be ecstatic and happy and at peace to do so, and you're thinking you want to go back and use your phone or use the computer or watch TV, then you're, you're weak. You have a prison back there that you've got to go to. And you've got to get rid of that weakness within your mind and get back into your natural rhythms and cycles to become the most powerful being you can be and achieve the dreams that everybody has singing somewhere inside their heart. Now, it's not a natural thing that we've come away from this because unfortunately, it's now become big business to take us away from our natural rhythms and cycles. Now, I know there's big business for running so it sounds counterintuitive, but there's another side of business as well. Yes, there is a sports business where running equipment, etc., is promoted and sold. But what has become really big business, sometimes unintentionally, but often intentionally, be it for profit or control, often control outweighs the profit, is keeping us outside of those natural rhythms and cycles. 
Because so long as you're outside of your natural rhythm and cycle, you need other things for your happiness. For instance, alcohol. For instance, junk food. For instance, mindless entertainment. And the more outside your natural rhythms and cycles you are, the more you need those things to feel happy. And the person who can provide you with those things can elevate their quality of life in doing so. But your happiness comes for free from within you. But for more than 90% of the people living in the Western systems, they don't sense that anymore because the happiness comes from outside and is put back in them, it's beamed into them via media, etc. Or their sadness or their fears is often the case as well. So I can't ignore the design of my body and nor should you. You are right now inside a vehicle that is the best designed long distance running mammal on the planet. Or one of. There's only a few others who could be said to be as good as. Now the reason you're like that is because your ability to sweat and the way your body's designed as I say. But if we're not teaching our children that, you know, what happens to a bird who you don't let fly? Is it as happy as the birds flying? Of course it's not. What happens to an animal that's supposed to run that you don't, that doesn't run? Is it as happy? as the ones who can. No. Now I'm not just referring to this and saying everyone should run. Some people are too unhealthy at this point to run, so you need to go and cycle and build up your legs, something with less impact on your legs because people are overweight and they have weak tendons, weak joints, etc. But what I'm saying is, understand that you have a natural rhythm and cycle, a natural program beyond your brain, beyond your concept of you and your thinking you, stuff goes on without you. Your heart beats, your body grew. Now they say the fall of man was the point where the serpent said that you now have the knowledge of good and evil. As many of you know, I interpret Adam and Eve to be a tomb, be from ancient Egyptian. We say amen at the end of every prayer, amen ra, so it's the same. You know, you have to look at this. A tomb, Adam. And to split the electron from the atom starts the multiplication of energy. Eve is the rib from Adam, she's the electron from Atum. But the introdu introduction of this serpent, this choice to do good, to do bad, they say is the fall of man. And they say this is where man developed the knowledge of good and evil. But I say what also went on within that development, however it came to be, is that we came away from the natural rhythm and cycle of our human vehicle. And by that, I mean, when your mind is thinking too much, that part of you that grew your body perfectly, as it should, with the correct timing, with the correct use of the minerals and the nutrients that you put inside it, that part of you, doesn't get a chance to speak because this part is too loud and when you make this quiet that part can guide everything it would seem that the knowledge of good and evil also took us away put some noise between us and that natural voice rhythm and cycle of our being And now others on this planet see that weakness and they're using it against you because they've learned how to come back to that silent space, which actually is messages from the intuition or your pineal gland. And it's now become big business to take you out of that cycle and rhythm so they can stay inside their higher elevated states of being off the back of your lower elevated state of being. So be wise to what you are and have a think about how you'll define what you are to your children. 
How will you tell your children? Or what will you tell your children a human being is? My children will know human beings have a great capacity for love. My children will know human beings have a great capacity to invent, to create. They will know we have a great capacity to care for others. They will know we have a great capacity for discipline over our animal nature. But on a very literal physical sense, they'll know we have a great capacity to run. They'll know we have a great capacity to tax our minds. And when we don't tax our minds, when we don't run, when we don't do these straightforward, simple, basic things that our human animal vehicle was designed to do, we won't be as good as what we can be. There's nothing more natural than plugging into a television and letting that light and audio take over your brain. Your brain's not taxed in the least bit. There's nothing less natural than never running in a body designed to run long distances. The same as a bird that's caged that can't fly is a tragedy. A human that's caged by their own unhealthiness and the media around them is also a tragedy. It doesn't mean they can't be a great human being. Just for I, from what I've seen, it means they can't be the best human being they can be. So work out how you'll define what you are to your children. Work out how to tune into your natural rhythms and cycles. And keep an eye out for those who are trying to keep you out of them. Be it for profit or control. I'm going to get off and enjoy the rest of this beautiful evening. It's very lucky to grow up here. Very unfortunate with regards to life opportunities in the communities I'm from. So many boarded up houses these days and so much poverty. But at least I always had this place predominantly to myself. It seems some things don't change. Because instead of being down here, I know I can walk this beach for hours and I might not see another human being. I might see the odd person walking a dog. I know if I went up there and looked in everyone's window, I'll see countless people staring at the TV. They're not in their natural rhythms and cycles. They don't go to bed with the memory of that golden light shining in this cave and the sound of those waves. And all in nature I've seen. They go to bed with the same memory as their neighbor. That's a tragedy for a mammal designed be in nature to run long, di run long distances and to challenge their intellect. So. Much love.